A word of warning, this tutorial might be too powerful. It might be too well explained and quite frankly, any tutorial you watch after this one won't stack up. So only proceed with this tutorial if you're ready to have your mind blown. So what is it that I'm talking about now that I've done that weird as fuck introduction? We're talking about lasers and really we're talking about how to make a laser cross from side to side procedurally and have it work with multiple objects and you can make it wiggle, you can make it change color, the entire thing. Here's a tiny example I made. So it's, you know, going across an object. You can even rotate it, not the plane, but the monkey. You can rotate it and everything still works. So it's kind of like the light is projecting from the top and then it doesn't matter where the objects are, right? The light falls where it falls. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. Let's make it. New Blender file. I'm using version 2.83. You can use any version you want. You can use version 2.9, 2.14. I don't care. Just use Blender. 2.83 is what I'm using, although it does have a certain node called the compare node that only exists in 2.82 and after. So that's something to keep in mind. So I'm going to set up our scene so it's not just a cube. Maybe we can have it be a plane. That's another cube. I am failing at this. We'll have it be a plane. And let's also have a monkey on top of it, which for some reason comes in disorientation instead of, you know, the natural, the natural orientation where it's sitting on the floor, something like this. So we're going to have to do that manually. And then let's just make this point a, a bit bigger. There we go. We have our scene set up. You can have different objects. You can have them anywhere, rotate them, duplicate them, whatever you want. And we're already halfway done with the effect, believe it or not. So shading workspace, this is where the magic happens. I'm gonna go to rendered mode so we can see everything that's going on. And remember, even though I haven't said it, try to remember that this laser effect is gonna be done in material. So everything, all the lasers, the parameters, whatever, is gonna be determined by the nodes in our material, meaning our object should have a material, preferably called laser or laser beam or any version of that. And we're gonna have all our objects have that same material, laser beam. So now this has laser beam, this has laser beam, and if we change the color, it should affect both because one material to two objects. Okay, so now the question is, how do we make that laser beam going from left to right, top to bottom, inverse to outverse, how do we do it? What we're gonna do is we're gonna add an a geometry node, and really what we're interested in is not any of these sockets, we only care about position. Position gives us a vector for each point, giving us the position where it is in space. That might not sound like it makes sense, but it's actually very simple. So the origin, like the center of the plane that's on the ground, is at the location 0, 0, 0, so it's going to be completely black. It's kind of hidden by the monkey, but it's going to be completely black. As we head towards the x-axis, so towards the right, everything gets redder because the x value becomes bigger than 0. As we go upwards, y value gets green for the same reason, and as we go perpendicular to the ground plane, it gets bluer because of the z-axis, right? Position, super simple. We don't care about most of the position. Really, all we care about is the x component, okay? Left to right, x gets uh, negative, zero, and then positive. Okay, so how do we turn this into a laser beam? All we need to do is add in a math node, and this is where the compare thing comes in that I was talking about before, if I can find it. Compare only in 2.82 and after. Compare. And then all we have to do once we have the compare node is it's going to compare our x value to, in this case, 0.5. So we're comparing x to 0.5 with a threshold or an epsilon of something slightly bigger than zero. And you can see this kind of forms a line. So really what this is saying is which x values are within 0.05 of our value 0.5. That means if we were to move this, this value that we're comparing to, it slides across because again, we have the same thickness or threshold, which is the epsilon, but we're just comparing to a different value. Same way we could do it with the Y and it's gonna give us you know, a different thing. Actually, we need only the Y and that's gonna give us a vertical situation, but we're just gonna use X. And you might be thinking, okay, this is a line, but it doesn't wrap around our geometry. And that's where you're wrong. It does wrap around our geometry because we're only looking at the X value. It's independent from Y and Z. It doesn't care about if it goes up and down, it just cares about uh, kind of the top view version of this. Meaning that now if we slide across, we have kind of a laser beam where this is where the position is, the value, and the epsilon is the thickness of that laser beam. So already a ton of control. To make this look good, what I recommend 
is not doing what I just did. What I recommend is taking our whole setup and connecting it to a mission. We want it to glow wherever there's a laser beam. So now it has the BSDF with a bit of a mission wherever we have this line. Still looks horrible, let's fix it. First of all, laser beams should probably be red, sometimes green, depending on the movie that you're watching. I'm gonna add a color ramp to do this. So, we, we have our factor essentially. This is just a mask for where our laser beam is gonna be. Where it's black, there is no laser beam, and where it's white, there is a laser beam. So with our color ramp, we wanna say white. White, turn that into, let's say, red. So second handle, convert it to red or blue or green or whatever. So I'm gonna go with red. Okay, so now we have a emission that is colored and all this, and now we want it to, you know, just have a bit more pop, like it's actually glowing, because Eevee doesn't handle this kind of stuff as well as Cycles, it's not gonna actually illuminate our geometry. So to do this, I'm gonna go to Render Tab, that's what this is called, Enable Bloom, which is gonna make it glow a bit once it's bright enough, and then to make this even brighter, I'm just gonna add in a vector, a vector math, and basically a color, a color output is almost identical to a vector thing, they're both three dimensional. You can think of them as the same thing, which is why I'm adding vector math instead of like mix RGB, they work essentially the same. I'm gonna turn this to scale as if we are scaling our color and then just bump this up and you can see now it's getting brighter, it's maintaining its color, but it's getting brighter and the bloom's affecting it. So without bloom, with bloom, this is why we have it. And I want to make this a bit thinner, so 0.03, so now it's very thin. And we can just have it go from side to side. It's glowing, it's nice. If we want it to glow even brighter, you can make the intensity, you know, bigger. You can make this number bigger, like 80, now it's really glowing. And remember, since we're only affecting the emission of the material, we can affect any of these other things and they'll still work. War nah, they will still work. We can make it metallic. We can make it reflective. We can even give it a different base color. So something like a checkerboard, which currently is gonna affect both of our objects since this material goes to both. But you can see it has the checkerboard and the emission, the laser is kind of like on top of it, which in this case is a good thing. Uh, but if you were to want two different kinds of situations for each object, eh, you want one object with a checkerboard, one with something else, you can basically make this set up in two different materials. So there's no reason it has to be one material, it's just easier in this case. And remember, the nice thing about this is we're using the position socket, which is independent, independent of whether we're rotating it. So it kind of just looks like the way it should. It doesn't stick with the object like something like generated coordinates would. So this is the nice setup. You can duplicate it, and as long as, long as it has the uh, material, it's gonna inherit that laser effect. Okay. So that's kind of the essence of this, but we are missing one critical component of making our laser. One thing that's gonna send us over the top, one thing I haven't explained yet, and that is making our laser not just go from left to right or top to bottom if we were to use, if we were to use the Y coordinate, right? Gives us the same setup, but again, this is just going this way or this way, cardinal directions. Doesn't give us that much control. How do I pick an arbitrary rotation angle that it crosses, right? What I'm gonna do is before, before this position reaches everything else, like we separate to X, do all this emission stuff, BSDF, in between what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in either a mapping node or even nicer, vector rotate node, although this one is in 2.83 and after, so if you don't have this mapping node works just fine. And as you might expect, vector rotate node is gonna take our position vectors and rotate them, and rotate them so that when we separate for the X component, it's gonna give us something a bit different. So we just take the angle and switch it. And now you see we have a rotating thing. So let's say we were to do like, I don't know, 45 degrees. So it's going from corner to corner, almost. Now it's scanning, but now in this direction. If we were to pick a different angle like this one, now it's scanning in this direction and everything like the thickness, all this still works. This is a cool way to make a lightsaber or something like that maybe. So that's one way to do it, vector rotate. The other way is the mapping node the mapping node, which you just change the, the Z rotation for. So same kind of deal. But this one actually has a bit more, I mean, the vector rotate node can do what I'm about to show you as well, but this is a bit simpler. If you were to choose the Y and make it 90, I believe, now you are scanning from top to bottom because you've rotated it 90 degrees on the Y axis. So it's no longer chopping, you know, from the top, but from the side now. 
So you can see what this is doing. So from a side view, it just looks like a line that's scanning up and down, but it wraps around our geometry. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna set this back to zero. One thing you might be wondering is, you know, this looks pretty good, but technically the laser is hitting the monkey from above, but there's still a laser beneath it as if it kind of doesn't care about that, and that's true. There is a way to fix this, and that is instead of just having it be position-based, uh, you can have a light from up top projecting the laser down. And if people are interested in that, uh, I will make a tutorial, but not for this one. So you can have it not repeat twice. So, you know, you have an object on top of this. It, it inherits the laser, but it also passes through it. There's a way to fix this. Um, but yeah, now you can rotate it. And one more thing I want to talk about, and this is just a bonus, really. So let's get rid of the mapping. Let's say you wanted your laser not to be perfect. Let's say you wanted it to be kind of wiggly. So it's kind of like this wiggly thing that has a bit of inconsistency to it traveling. How do you do that? Well, this is a trick I show all the time, so I won't explain it too much, but you add a noise texture. This is gonna be our source of randomness. We're gonna use vector math. So we're gonna add our position. So this is the position we were using before. Add in what is effectively our randomness. So now we've kind of distorted it, which you can kind of see. Now again, this isn't perfect. It kind of does what we want. You could, you could even be happy with this, where the amount of wiggle is determined by the scale of our noise, right? So this kind of shows, kind of looks like a lightning bolt. But technically, this isn't exactly what we want, because in some areas, it gets, like, very thick. Um, but if you're happy with this, this is fine. A way to correct this is what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to scale our noise. So let's set this to scale. So this is the strength, effectively, of our randomness. So you can see, you can see what that does. It gets very weird once you pick out large values, but might, that might be what you want. Uh, to fix this, what we need is a correction term. So we're gonna subtract by another scaled vector. We're gonna subtract 0.5, and then the value for this scale and this scale, we're gonna make the same. So connect, connect. Okay, so now we have a setup that lets us control kind of what's going on in a more controlled way, although you could have just used the scale from before. So you do this, and then as it scans, it like wiggles across, kind of like a paper being set on fire, and it's like burning from one side to another, and you can make that less intense. So when it's zero, it should be perfectly straight, and then otherwise it will have a bit of wiggle. For those of you curious, uh, ju just so a quick explanation, the reason this works is you have your position, you add randomness, but... Um, the randomness has a value of between 0 and 1 for each point, so on average you're adding 0.5, if you were to just average all these infinite points, on average you're adding 0.5 on x, y, and z, which means there's going to be a bit of drift, which means you need to add a correction term, you need to subtract by the same thing, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, but if you add in scaling, then you have to do this whole setup. That's kind of the loose explanation, don't worry about it if you don't get it, but the essence of this is we now have a system that lets us, if we add in our vector rotate again, we have a system that lets us rotate our source vector. We can also control the amount of wiggle. We can control how far this is scanning across, the thickness of that situation, the color of that situation, and it's all gonna glow, and then also the intensity. And then when it's set to zero, you have this kind of, or a low number, you have kind of this interesting thing going on where it's, where it's very faint. Uh, but yeah, that, that's the setup, works with any amount of objects, all that, so there you go. I hope you enjoyed this laser sharp tutorial if you did the best way to support this channel is via the patreon this is a way to not only you know directly support if you want to but you get exclusive tutorials if you get that tier you get exclusive project files if you pick that tier behind the scenes discord access you would not believe what's there but of course only if you want to i hope that you enjoyed this free tutorial anyways and that is that's the thing hope you enjoyed it already said that